Functional symptoms such as clicking and locking are some of the most frequent findings in patients with temporomandibular joint disorders. Both the normal and pathological anatomy and function of this joint has caused a lot of speculations. Can you, Dr. Eriksson, review the anatomy of a temporomandibular joint? This is a sagittal section of a right temporomandibular joint. Here you can see the condyle, the fossa, and the tubuc. This is a disc. And here you have the upper joint compartment and the lower joint compartment fill with blow water in order to stabilize the disc during sectioning. The soft tissue cover on the condyle is thin. This is probably an artifact. And it's also seen in the fossa and somewhat thicker on the tubuc. The posterior band of the disc is situated superior to the condyle. The posterior attachment is a little bit thinner and longer than seen in an absolutely normal joint. The lower head of the lateral tagoid muscle is seen here, and this is the superior head. The knowledge of anatomy is essential for understanding of joint pathology. During orthography, we have learned that the function of the joint is also very essential. Which are the possibilities to study joint function? Arthrography, surgery, and arthroscopy can give an impression of the function of a joint but it is far from easy to understand the complex function of this joint by observing it through a surgical opening or through a thin arthroscope. Videotape recording of arthrography is probably the most effective way of studying joint function today. This technique is however not optimal for educational purposes since the interpretation of the arthrograms requires some training. Dr. Ispa and myself studied the course of clicking temporomandibular joints in autopsy specimens by the aid of high-speed cinematography. This gave Dr. Eriksson and myself the idea of making a videotape of functional alterations of a temporomandibular joint. 